everyone and welcome to 15th lecture of this uh, global navigation satellite systems and applications course. Uh, in the previous lecture we have discussed uh, some about the errors which are associated with GNSS and uh, today uh, we will be also discussing on the same line further on the this uh, GNSS correction methods how these can be corrected. There are some methods which we have already discussed like a DG, uh, DGNSS that is differential GNSS is also a correction method and uh, if you involve SBAS that is also a correction method. RTK is also one of the correction methods but there are also some possibilities. Some we have touched in previous discussions and uh, in some uh, other correction methods which we will be discussing uh, in this uh, particular uh, lecture. As you know that there are two types of services many of these GNSS uh, uh, providers or GNSS operators provide and uh, that uh, you know there is a standard positioning service and another one is the precise positioning service. So, SPS and PPS, but uh, here uh, we are talking about uh, something which is uh, different uh, than precise positioning service, it is uh, precise point positioning service and uh, how this uh, can be achieved by providing corrections in the data and uh, the corrections uh, in positioning techniques basically to remove or models the GNSS system errors uh, so that uh, we can have a high level of uh, accuracy from a single receiver. See uh, maintaining two receivers one stationary and one roving and then maintaining communication between them uh, becomes a very difficult and expensive option also. But if we go for uh, uh, this is the trend now is that people are looking a single receiver option but high level of accuracy and therefore there are some uh, techniques or options are becoming available one of them is uh, like SBAS, this is also similar to the SBAS, but uh, some uh, you know subscription based and some other ways of involving this is also here. So, this is what we are going to discuss that this PPP uh, solution basically depends on the GNSS satellite clock and orbit uh, corrections and these are generated from a network of global reference stations. So, uh, if somebody uh, some country or uh, through United Nations or whatever the world community if we install such a reference station or maybe through private companies one of the examples which I will be showing here and uh, then uh, these reference stations can transmit the corrections and uh, then uh, these uh, can reach to the uh, end users which we, which is having a single receiver but having capabilities of receiving uh, these corrections either through uh, the satellite like a geostationary satellite or maybe through internet. So, that way uh, the corrections uh, can be applied and a high level of position accuracy can be achieved. And uh, like for example, here this is through this is schematic let us discuss this that uh, there are the GNSS constellations are there various constellations now we know. Uh, one of the constellations is also highlighted here that is a GPS constellation, but along which we are having GLONASS and uh, Baidu and Galileo and IRNSS that is NAVIC. And uh, then uh, uh, what these uh, GNSS uh, constellations are doing, they are providing locations to reference station basically we as in differential GNSS we call them as a base station. Now, these base stations are uh, through a network control center, they are transmitting uh, collecting the data, they are making corrections in the uh, position and those corrections how much uh, the position has to be correct, uh, corrected at that particular time when somebody is having a single receiver in the field that is transmit that is uplinked uh, through a station earth station. Uh, to a geostationary satellites which we see here and uh, through that a user can get a, a signal directly in the field in real time. Now, it is it the one possibility is getting the signals directly from uh, geostationary satellites or there is another possibility of getting signals from internet. So, these two options are now being uh, 
uh, explored or available and uh, this is what uh, the precise point positioning system is. So, this uh, in this uh, PPP these corrections are used by the receiver resulting in decim decimeter level or better position with no base station required. This is the important point here that in this uh, option that is PPP uh, precise point positioning system in this uh, uh, the base station installed by the user is not required, but reference stations by the service providers are definitely there without that it is not possible. So, a PP, uh, PP, typical PPP solution requires a period of time to coverage the decimeter accuracy in order to resolve any local uh, biases and such as atmospheric conditions, a multipath environment and satellite geometry. So, these, these things are uh, definitely uh, are required and they are resolved also. The, so, actual accuracy is achieved by and the convergence time required depending on the quality of corrections and how they are applied to the receiver. And this uh, by which this, this method we can receive of up to 3 centimeter accuracy is possible. Uh, so, uh, with the more advancement more options are available we are um, definitely uh, reaching to millimeter accuracy uh, possibilities with a single receiver. So, this in PPP however, in this uh, PPP and uh, the in the which is quite similar to the structure or concept of SBAS systems which we have already discussed that uh, the better the best part of PPT that it provides corrections to a receiver to increase position accuracy. So, if I am getting signals from SBAS and using those corrections then I may not achieve that accuracy comparatively as provided through this uh, precise point positioning. However, this uh, PPP systems uh, typically provide a greater level of accuracy and uh, this is important charge a fee to access the corrections and this, this, this service is not going to be free because whoever will invest for uh, developing base stations and uh, a central processing unit or center and then uplinking and finally, might be having a geostationary satellite for that purpose. So, if uh, somebody is putting that kind of investment then definitely there will be a subscription and uh, this uh, PPP systems also allow a single correction stream to be used worldwide and uh, therefore, the same uh, receiver uh, can uh, receive uh, correction signals which uh, if it is taken in any part of the world. So, that is another advantage is however, as we know that the SBAS is a uh, regional system. So, it depends whether that country is providing that service or not. Whereas, the PPP you can consider as a global or worldwide uh, positioning service. Now, the, the main error sources for PPP are mitigated uh, by these uh, through these manners that the dual frequency operations. Uh, first, uh, because uh, these receivers will receive signals in two frequencies. So, the first order ionospheric delay is uh, basically proportional to the carrier wave frequency and those can be removed and therefore, the first order ionospheric delay can be totally be eliminated by using combinations of the dual frequency GNSS measurements. This part we have already discussed when we were discussing about uh, that how an ionosphere uh, a, a ionospheric delays causes the uh, delay in the signals and then errors in the positioning and uh, how uh, dual frequencies can be uh, there. Now, there is another way of doing this thing is a external error uh, correction data that this includes the satellite orbit and clock corrections and also using private services or services which are available globally. For example, there is a uh, com uh, there is a company which provides the service which, which called is Terra Star service. So, these corrections are generated broadcasted to the end users whoever subscribed uh, to, uh, to their services uh, by a uh, in Mars set uh, telecommunication satellites. For example, uh, they say that uh, Terra Star service and they, you, they are having a global network 
of multiple GNSS reference stations and having advanced algorithms to generate highly precise GNSS satellite orbit, clock biases and other system parameters. And this information then allowed uh, this Terra service to provide correction services worldwide and uh, a, a single, uh, single receiver can give the position uh, into even centimeter accuracy. So, uh, or uh, these also if there is no uh, geostationary satellite over that part of the world, then these services can also be either provided through the cellular networks through internet protocols and this service is available worldwide. And this is one of the examples from that uh, same company Terra Star uh, services. This is the coverage map and uh, it is not complete word, but uh, it, let us focus over India. So, this is the geostationary satellite which is covering a large part of uh, India and subcontinent where this service is available and uh, it is very easy to identify which satellite is geostationary then generally they are all along the equator as you can see here. So, there are various satellites covering various parts of the earth over India we are having this IOR and uh, which provides uh, services uh, through subscription by, by this uh, Terra star uh, uh, coverage. So, likewise uh, we can get a high a highly precise point positioning. Now, there are of course, this uh, uh, tropospheric delays and ionospheric delays are there. So, then modeling part is also be there. So, tropospheric delay is corrected using UNB University of New Brunswick model. Generally, this is the model people are using and however, the bad part where moisture is high of troposphere delay because of clouds and other and uh, it is highly varying because you know the cloud keep changing and it cannot be modeled with sufficient accuracy. So, that much inaccuracy will be there. However, this uh, residual tropospheric delay which is caused by this wet part or clouds uh, can be estimated when estimating position and other unknowns. And the modeling is also used in PP receivers to correct the solid earth uh, tides effect. So, that part is also corrected. Now, there are uh, filters which we can employ uh, of course, uh, they are uh, they will uh, make corrections uniformly, but uh, this is how uh, one way of doing this thing that filters are there that tropospheric delay is corrected using this filter and the filters are the extended Kalman filter which is used for PPP estimation and the position receiver clock error, the tropospheric delay and uh, carrier phased uh, uh, ambiguities are estimated using this uh, EKF states and this EKF uh, filter minimizes noise in the system and enables estimating position with centimeter level of accuracy. And this uh, estimates of uh, through this uh, extended Kalman filter states are improved with the successive GNSS measurements until the coverage uh, to stable and accurate values. And uh, the typical uh, convergence time of PPP to under 10 centimeter horizontal error and between uh, 20 to 40 minutes, but it depends on the number of satellites available. This condition is always prevailing in all scenarios that if less number of satellites are available from different G multiple GNSS systems then of course, it is going to affect the accuracy. So, here also it depends on the number of satellites available, how they are uh, distributed in the space and uh, the uh, GDOP geometric dilution of precision that is ge satellite geometry, quality of correction products, how the corrections are being performed, the receiver path uh, multipath environment, whether the signals are being received by the receiver directly from these GNSS satellites or through reflection after the reflection may be through mountain or a building or any other uh, physical object and may and depend also on the atmospheric conditions. So, there are several uh, providers of PPP services one we have already dis, uh, discussed that uh, Terra star there are others like uh, Beripos, Omni star and Starfire and many more are also coming there because there is a lot of demand for high precision data or point positioning 
uh, services for that people are developing and they of course they are using also and uh, these uh, PPE service providers operate in network of ground reference stations in case of Terra star we have seen and to collect uh, uh, for the correction data for the different signal broadcasted by uh, these satellites and the corrections calculated from this data are broadcast from a geostationary satellite and uh, to the receiver by subscribed users. So, that means the service is not free. The s bus service uh, may be free, but this PPP service is not free. Now, it is also one possibility like in uh, uh, DGNSS or differential uh, positioning service uh, where uh, people go for post processing. Here also the GNSS data post processing is possible for many applications uh, which are required uh, like for example, airborne survey corrected GNSS positions are not required in real time. There can be many other services apart from this airborne surveys where real time corrections are not required means say when the uh, survey is being done either in the field or in the air then it is not necessary that at that moment I require the precise service. However, later on uh, through post processing methods and uh, the same data can be collected we will be seeing that scenario also. And uh, so, for these applications such applications which does not require uh, uh, real time corrections and the raw GNSS satellite measurements are collected or recorded and uh, then stored for post processing. And uh, unlike like uh, RTK in the real time kinematic GNSS positioning, post processing does not require real time transmission of differential correction message. This, this is uh, this process can be done little later and this simplifies the hardware configuration requirements because if one go for real time or SBAS or any other thing uh, or PPP then you have to have a dual frequency receiver or if we go for di uh, differential GNSS then again you have to have one base one uh, roving. But in case of this post processing based uh, GNSS uh, correction uh, only the recording is required and later on through the softwares and using the data of base station uh, it can be done and therefore it is cost effective in some cases where real time data is not required. And during this uh, post processing the base station data can be used from one or more GNSS receivers. So, if uh, there are more receivers uh, uh, which we are involved in the surveying all those receivers can use the base station data and corrections can be performed to achieve a better accuracy later on. Now, multi base uh, processing helps. Uh, by preserve uh, which preserves the high accuracy over a large uh, project area which is a common occurrence for aerial applications. There are various geophysical or uh, aerial photography or lidar where uh, airborne uh, aircrafts are used and uh, airborne instruments are used for that uh, this can be very useful. So, depending on the basically projects uh, proximity to a permanently operating GNSS network base station data can often be freely downloaded eliminating the need for establishing your own base station or network. So, that, that makes very this whole operation uh, very cost effective if uh, real time corrections are not required. How, moreover, it is possible to process without any base station data uh, through PPP. Uh, which utilizes downloaded precise clock and FM marriage data. So, there are other possibilities which can also be used for this one. Now, post processing applications offer a, a, great, a great deal of flexibility because at that moment of time when survey is being done you do not require the highly precise positioning data. So, once uh, that requirement is gone then lot of new possibilities are there and which uh, involves the stationary or moving base stations and some support integration with customer or third party software modules. And uh, post uh, processing applications may be designed uh, to run on personal computers. It is not necessary that uh, a, a high end uh, workstation is required all the time if it, the area is not a big and accessible through simple to use graphical user interface or GUI. 
and post processing generally results in a more accurate and comprehensive solution which may not be possible sometimes in real time. So, this, uh, this is one of the examples that when survey was being done, this is how the track has been recorded and uh, then the route uh, taken by a vehicle or uh, in air survey, uh, a sorties have been recorded like this and later on through post processing, one can uh, make corrections and can make the data more accurate here. So, this is a carrier residual which we see here, uh, root mean square plot and this is velocity profile plot because uh, when a vehicle is moving or aircraft is moving may not be all the time moving in the same speed or same velocity. So, the velocity also changes and therefore, everything is recorded and later on uh, corrections can be performed and high accuracy can be achieved. So, measurements uh, recorded during the mission and such as the velocity which results into the horizontal and vertical components because if uh, ups and downs are there then those things are also recorded and later on corrections can be performed. Now, GSN uh, there is basically uh, there can be a question that which uh, option one should go. So, there is no straightforward answer uh, to this question that uh, which is the best uh, GNSS correction method. The various options are available, it depends basically uh, for which application I am looking for. So, this is a basically application dependent correction methods are available. If application requires real time corrections, then few methods are available. If application does not require the real time corrections, then some methods are available. So, if, uh, if we see this, uh, this is the comparison between accuracy and practical range of use of each of these methods. So, if I do not use any correction method, simple GNSS system, then I am having accuracy of 10 meter which uh, in this case. And then if I am using the PP, PPV that is point positioning uh, service and uh, then uh, I may be having accuracy of 10 centimeter. But in real time sometimes I may get accuracy even less than uh, 10 centimeter. So, that is uh, one uh, very good option is available. But uh, uh, if you same time if you see the baseline then in RTK the baseline uh, has to be very small means uh, the receiver uh, the rover, rover receiver and uh, stationary receiver has to be very close by as in this example that maximum it is shown up to say 80 kilometer. But uh, in case of D, uh, DGNSS that is differential GNSS and SBUS the scenario is almost same that SBUS may provide accuracy of about 1 to 3 meters and uh, same with the DGNSS and uh, maybe from 50 centimeter to 1 meter, but uh, the baseline option is much more available. That uh, in case of SBAS, you can see the uh, it is about uh, say roughly 5000 kilometer or 3 4000 kilometer uh, range and that baseline is available because it is basically again based on the geostationary satellite. So, basically the best uh, there cannot be a direct answer that which is the best GNSS correction method. However, as mentioned earlier that it depends on project application and requirements. If real time and uh, then and a very highly precise uh, positioning is required then RTK is one of the options. Uh, PPP can also be options, but if uh, that project or application does not require that accuracy as RTK can provide. Otherwise, as pass and DGNSS because the baseline is very large is there and if uh, uh, if one can one can be happy with 10 meter accuracy, then simple single GNSS receiver can help that one. Even sometimes in open areas, these simple single handled GNSS receivers even based on a smart a smart uh, phone can provide accuracy of 3 meters. So, that is the best part. Now, we will be comparing between different possibilities that uh, DGNSS and RTK first and then later on with the other options also. So, this uh, the configuration in DGNSS and RTK is almost same that you require a uh, in uh, are similar that the both methods require a base station receiver set up at a known location 
or a location can be made known by collecting data for few weeks or months and the rover receiver that gets corrections from base station and a communication link between the two receivers. So, in that case that there is no difference between GNSS and RTK. However, the difference starts because as you know that the GNSS, DGNSS method is code based whereas your RTK method is carrier phase. So, that is the major difference between these two. The advantage with the DGNSS is, is a, it is a useful over a longer baseline as also in the previous diagram is we have realized that DGNSS provides a long baseline whereas RTK provides relatively a very small baseline. In all, in all options RTK anyway provides the minimum baseline distance between the base station and your roving receiver. So, the, this is the major difference between GNSS and RTK. If we compare SBAS which is satellite based augmentation system and this uh, point uh, uh, positioning system uh, or uh, this uh, service then the N, uh, SBAS system and a PPS system are similar in both systems receive corrections from satellites. Maybe satellites or here we can also add through mobile network or internet and this PPP system is significantly more accurate as we have also seen. Uh, in the previous uh, when uh, we were comparing the data through a diagram that uh, uh, it is uh, definitely better than SBAS system your PPP system and this accuracy advantage is due to the correction method. So, uh, though the hardware from point of view is almost same, but uh, correction methods may be different and therefore, we are getting much better accuracy estimate or position estimates through PPP. As well system use code method whereas uh, uh, your PPP use the carrier phase method. So, the same difference as in DGNSS and RTK and the, there are other part of accuracy advantage is that which are the common with SBAS and PPP that the private uh, correction services typically use PPP systems provide high quality corrections and are multi frequency multi constellation you know that um, today is the trend is whoever is developing receiver or doing any survey everyone is looking uh, data from multi constellations or multi GNSS systems and why not when there such options are available one should definitely will use. Uh, further the, the advantage of SBAS system is that correction services are free for everyone whereas PPP service this is is available only through subscription. So, one has to pay a uh, and some subscription to get this PPP service. Now, DGNSS and SBAS and uh, that uh, when we compare differential GNSS and SBAS then uh, while the accuracy of DGNSS are almost similar, but anyway SBAS provides better than DGNSS the equipment required for systems are different because in DGNSS requires a base station, antenna and rover stations in case of SBAS only requires a SBAS capable receiver and a GNSS. So, maybe a dual frequency receiver a single receiver can give you a higher accuracy of a few centimeters whereas, DGNSS can also provide accuracy uh, to that extent. Now, when we compare the RTK that real time kinematic uh, option and PPP then a real time system offers again high accuracy that is the best accuracy available, but it requires lot of uh, it is expensive option PPP system has a simpler configuration single receiver system and of course, dual frequency and a configuration at least two RTK capable receivers here only single PPP compatible receiver. So, that is major and uh, makes difference in the cost also and also achieve high level of accuracy when the base station must be precisely set as known location. The one major also difference here between RTK and PPP is that uh, the baseline difference here in RTK the baseline has to be very small compared to PPP and uh, as one example we have seen uh, where the globally this service is being provided by few companies. So, uh, there is the there is no limitation of basically baseline because the PPP corrections are being provided through geostationary satellites or maybe through internet. So, however, the PPP somewhat lower accuracy 
longer initial convergence time. So, the RTK definitely is much better and uh, when we go further on this the distance between as we have already discussed that rover station it is very uh, limited in that compared to uh, 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 compared to PPP because there is no concept of base station. The service provider or the correction provider he they might be having their own reference stations to provide you corrections through and uh, satellite. So, this brings to the end of uh, uh, this discussion about uh, and uh, all possible correction methods we have discussed starting from differential and then RTK then SBAS and then finally we ended up with this PPP. So, this uh, basically ends uh, this discussion on the errors part and how these errors can be corrected and how a better accuracy and position estimates can be achieved. So, this brings to the end of this discussion and uh, as usual I am leaving with a cartoon to smile. Thank you very much.